Hey folks, tonight we have the E-Flight Night Radiant, one of my favorites. I've always said of all the airplanes that I have, big ones, small ones, helicopters, drones, if I could only have one, this would probably be the one. And hopefully you'll see why. So I want to take a few minutes to show you the assembly. This is not how you'll see it if you get it brand new out of the box, but fairly so. I want to point out something really quick in the assembly here is that they provide a piece of tape that goes on the elevator to hold the elevator on you'll slide that in from the side um, and they provide a piece of tape. That's their recommendations. I don't know if there's an addendum to that or not yet, but uh, take, take time to uh, put some CA glue on there, or at least some form of glue. Um, there's been too many people and you'll look around on the internet and you'll find that a lot of people have had the tape come loose over some period of flights or whatever. And this elevator will slide back and you see that little wedge there in the rudder and you can guess where that sticks. And when you're flying along and that sticks in that little wedge, well, it's just a torpedo. So don't ask me how I know on a previous one. Maybe I just read it out of a book. <laughs> I actually had that happen. So take some time and put some CA glue in there. You'll uh, thank me later. Um, so anyway, once you have the elevator installed, and this is probably how you'll transport it. It has a two meter wingspan, which is pretty good size. And uh, you'll probably take the time to take the wing off of it. Now, most of the time I transport it, I like to just leave the wings on it. Um, but here I want to take it off to show you just how it is if you're going to transport it, the process of assembling it. So I always put my screws back in the wing. That way you won't lose them. And if you get like me and get more than two or three airplanes, you begin to forget which hardware goes with which airplane. So when you screw them back in, as long as they'll fasten in nice and tight, then, uh, you won't lose them. You won't forget where you put them and you'll have them when you need them. Those are just Phillip head screws. I have a little uh, indentation in there where the, where the uh, light wires go. You don't have ailerons, so you just have the wires for the lights. We'll be running it on a 2200 3S uh, 30C. You have your carbon spar or your wing tube, wing joiner. Slide that in. And this is a bit of a trick because you do have to feed those wires in. So I wanted to demonstrate that as well. We're just going to get these started. It would be nice if these had like some sort of quick disconnect. And this is the main reason why I, I kind of opt to leave the wings on most of the time. So we'll flip it over. Whoops. And I'll show you how this goes down here is going to be where your light controller is. Now, I already had this one loose, but, well, I guess it is. It restuck. But um, they make a wing nut. Uh, let me grab that just a second. Keep here, and I'll grab the wing nut controller and show you what it looks like. It's over here in my toolbox. Um, the company is just wing nut, and maybe I can put a link in the video description. But this is kind of what you'll get with the wing nut controller when you order it. And I think right now they're out of stock, but I'm sure they'll be back in stock. Tells you where right wing, left wing, nose, fuselage, tail, um, and you'll plug all your servos from your, uh, all your lights rather into these different channels. You can program it. I've not messed around with programming. And then this wire runs up through to the front and I can show you the setup in the front, but this replaces the current uh, e-flight controller and you get the options of um, some different light patterns that you don't get with the stock controller. And then also you get the option to uh, put it on a servo or, or another channel rather. And then uh, you can change the patterns while you fly. It gives you things like navigation lights. Um, so really a lot of cool features. So this is what I wanted to demonstrate. is It is a bit of a challenge to feed these wires up from the bottom. Maybe you can zoom in a little closer so people can see what's going on here. Maybe I can look and see what I'm doing. But you have to feed these wires in. There's a little hole there. And you got to feed these wires in, this little hole, every time you put the wing in. And you got to reach down through here and grab them. Uh, really need a pair of needle nose pliers. Oh, here we are. I don't know if you can see that down there, but it's a bit of a challenge. I'm sure that there's a better design out there somewhere. It would be super cool if there were just some quick plugs. But I know that would be challenging because both of these wings do slide in. I don't know that they 
quite touch or connect, but they get pretty close. So bring it in. Make sure you have the proper polarity. I'm going to flip it around. And I'm sure that's hard for the camera to see, but I can see what I'm doing. And we're going to bring this one in. Let's go ahead and put that screw in there. That way this one, so that this wing that we just put in doesn't come back apart. So... All right, now we're going to push the other wing in again to take this wire, find the little hole, and feed it up through there. Fish it up through there and grab it. A uh, bit of a challenge. I do have a wire that I use for this kind of stuff. It's just a little aluminum control rod and I might have to use it on this one because this one's a little bit of a bear. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And then make sure these light wires are tucked in there because this uh, piece of plastic slides over or would be under this if it's right side up and that's what the wing attaches to and holds it in from sliding. So uh, if you don't have that in that little pocket where it's supposed to go, when you shove the wing on, it'll put that little wire, light wire on a bind, and that wouldn't just be healthy for it. So, all right, again, a bit of a challenge to see what we're doing here. It's kind of tight. Um, well, maybe in a future video, I'll show you what it looks like with the wing nut controller in it. Really does clean things up a lot. Not so much down here, but on the top side, and we'll see that in just a few moments. All right, make sure our wing is pressed on all the way. And get our screw in there. Don't forget to put your screws in there. I've heard of some people that get busy and forget the screws, and it's not something you want to forget. It doesn't go well. All right, make sure everything's tucked in. Make sure it's out of the way of your servos down here. That's pretty important if you don't want to crash. We'll flip it right side up, open this up, here's our battery, 2200 milliamp, Spectrum 3 cell, 30C, we have an NX8 again today, I've already have it bound, and I'm going to slide it in there. So, if you have this wing nut controller, the wing nut controller goes underneath in that pocket, and then all you have is just single wire coming up that jumps into whatever channel you want. And then you can program it on your controller uh, to go through the patterns, the light sequences, and the different options. So we've got mosquitoes and bugs out. Let's see here. I like to tighten it up a little bit. There's not really much room for it to slide around, so it's not a big worry, but never a bad idea to tighten it down. So you can see it's a bit of a spaghetti mess here. We're going to go ahead and power this up. Make sure your model is straight. So this does have safe. There we go. Once that's initialized, this uh, current controller, which comes with the plane, plugs in right here. And boy, look at that. That is beautiful. Has this little switch here. Not really sure why that's there, because if you fly during the daytime, you just unplug it from your balance plug. All right, well, let's flip it back on. You can toggle through some of the patterns here, different colors. Oh, wow. Different patterns. There's like three switches here. Let's see if we can uh, get it on something a little more steady. It's been a while since I've run this controller. There's something a little slow. Goes faster and faster. They're slow. Changes the colors. See if we can get one that goes through the different colors. I think that might be it. Or is that just blue? Uh, that's just blue little purple. 
I don't know how many uh, different colors there are, different light patterns rather. There's a lot of different ones. Try to get it on something a little more steady. Okay, well, you definitely don't want the lights to turn off while we're flying. So with the wingnut uh, controller, you can have it on another channel and you can change it while in flight. On this one, you just kind of pick whichever one you want and then send it with that one. Yeah, that, look, that looks pretty nice. I think that might change for us too. We'll see. All right. So we tuck this back in here, and you can see it's a bit of a spaghetti. That's one thing nice about the wingnut controllers. You just have this single wire coming up and tagging in. So, Okay, I think we're ready to take it out into the night and fly it. This has telemetry, so it's nice to be able to see. We have a full battery. All right, let's see what we can do here. This plane has so many lights on it, it just makes the ground glow, which is really cool when you're flying low to the ground. Being able to see the, the ground where you're at when you're coming in is really helpful. As you'll see, we have some runway lights. Been doing some night flying out here, so that is really cool. All right, here it is. There's the top view of it. Turn around and let you see the bottom view. Nice and bright. All right, let's prepare to take off. Enough talking. Make sure your throttle cuts off. Always test your throttle. Very nice. It's got the brake set on there pretty hard. And we don't need to set our timer because we have telemetry. So I'm going to check safe. I always like to launch in safe. Throttle up. Probably three-quarters throttle. Just a little toss. And there it goes. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know how much of the night sky that you can see on camera, but it is a beautiful evening out. There it is. Look at that. Maybe I shouldn't fly too high. I'm not sure how the camera will pick it up. So this is flying in safe. This is capable of loops. Let's see if we can show you a loop. You got to take it out of safe, of course, to do a loop. Add some throttle. There's a loop. Fairly tight loops, really, for the plane that it is. I'm going to do some tight circles. That is really cool. And this plane is really easy to see at night, as you've probably figured out. But I say that because sometimes we get an airplane or a jet, and it's got navigation lights, a single LED on the wingtip. You know, maybe a landing light when you lower the landing gear and a, a one on the tail or the fuselage. And we think, oh, wow, that'll be fun to fly at night. And well, you can fly it at night, but it's not as enjoyable uh, watching just a few, three or four different color dots flying through the air when you can't see your airplane. But this one has uh, LEDs, as you can see, the full width of the wing, the fuselage, not all the way up the rudder, but almost and then also the full length of the elevator. Not quite out to the nose, unfortunately. But it does uh, from the top view, because in the canopy you can see them if you get close enough. Um, another modification or upgrade that some people do is they'll remove the lights from the wing, the main wing especially, and I believe the elevator, and then they'll reverse them. So right now the LEDs, the LED emitter elements or chips are facing down, so it's really bright and really intense to the eye. But if you flip them around and point them upwards, it makes the whole wing glow, and that's really even more enjoyable. Another little thing that I did um, is I did remove the black stripes on the bottom, um, so I, I can see the LEDs very easily all the way across the whole wing. So it's typical to put a couple black 
maybe I would call them invasion stripes um, on the bottom of the wing. And I forget now if they're on the right or the left wing now, but I did remove those because they just make a dark spot in the strand of LEDs. So this way it may shine a little bit better. So I'm used to flying this on the wing nut and I'll probably do another video uh, to demonstrate the, the patterns and how to set up, how to install the wing nut board. Um, so this is enjoyable, but it's really nice to be able to toggle through your light patterns. So this one, you just have to kind of set it, whichever one you want to fly on, send it up and watch it. And uh, if you want to change it, you got to land it and change it. So anyway, there's another thing I want to point out too. There is a blind spot because there's no LEDs facing the front of the aircraft. So I want to show you there's a blind spot when you're diving slightly downwards facing to you and see if we can make it disappear. There you go. See how it just... It's really hard to see. I'm going to pull up, but keep that in mind. So it's sort of like those cheap drones and things that you'd get from the big box stores. You're flying them around and it's got good connection when you fly out far away, but then the moment you turn back around to come home, you know, it disconnects or something. <laughs> so keep that in mind. There is a, there is some blind spots um, when these are stock out of the box. I'm not for sure if, uh, Turning the LEDs around and facing them upwards would help with the blind spot. Maybe it would, I'm not sure. So this is capable of loops, as I mentioned already. We'll demonstrate again. Um, but you can also fly this inverted. You really gotta be on top of it. It does take throttle to get it into the inverted flight. I believe you have to start with a loop. Let's see if we can do it. And then you add throttle. And there's full down elevator. Uh, eh, it's really hard. Once you get it inverted, it's hard to turn it. We're going to pull out of it. But anyway, it is capable of inverted flight. But with those uh, wings that sweep up on the end or dihedral like, they're really hard to fly it inverted. Does some pretty tight circles. I don't think you can hover this. Kind of need ailerons to do that. Yeah, I can't hover it because it just doesn't have enough rudder authority. So I've been flying this with the motor. But you don't have to do that. You can take it up. You can shut the motor off and glide it. This is a 2200 milliamp battery. I don't know if you could put a much bigger battery in there. I suppose you could if you could get it to fit. Might have to carve out some foam or something. Definitely want to check your CG. There's hands off, just gliding. And um, probably not the best plane to thermal, but it's definitely possible. I think the longest flight I've had on this was maybe like 57 minutes. And that was on a windy day. I was just motoring up and gliding down. Really wasn't trying to thermal or anything. Um, normal flight, I'm not really sure how long you would expect out of this, but I, I would say a good 20 minutes, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. And it depends on how much you're in the throttle. Everybody flies different. So telemetry is really nice because you can just pull up the telemetry on your screen and see how much uh, battery life you have left. We'll fly it kind of low so you can see how it glows off of the ground and that ground effect, which is really nice. Again, when you're coming in, it's nice to be able to see how low you are. Probably see the runway lights. We'll do a real low pass. Sometimes I like to keep the throttle on just slightly, just to help give it some authority. Ooh, that was pretty low. You know you're low when you hear the prop catch on some grass. <laughs> but as I said before, this is one of the most relaxing planes to fly. Just put it in safe, cruise around. This might be a little big for some parks, maybe for some neighborhoods. 
but it's definitely quiet. I don't think it would attract too much unwanted attention. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, anyway, we're not going to fly at the full length of the battery because we'd probably be out here all night. But I did want to take a moment to show it off. And again, I wish I could show you some of the different how it looks uh, flying with the different light patterns. It's got all different colors, whatever color you want, they have it. It's programmed in. On 4th of July, I flew with the wingnut controller and it had red, white, and blue. So I got to fly it up above all the fireworks. And that was kind of cool. Well, let's see. Well, let's do a speed pass just to show you about how fast it is. It's not really meant for speed, but it's pretty quick. Definitely not like the Conchindo. Has plenty of power. Let's see if we can show you how much power it has. We'll glide around. The biggest thing when you go to land this is bleeding off your airspeed because you don't have any ailerons and uh, no flaps or anything like that. So it glides and glides and glides. And of the folks that I've allowed to test drive this one just for fun, give them the opportunity to fly it. Um, that was one of the things I noticed when I let other people fly it. The first thing you, you have to get used to is how much it glides and your approach. You have to have a nice long approach. All right, full throttle up. And it, as you can see, there's plenty of power. That's, you know, I don't know, that maybe 45 degrees, maybe more. Yeah, that's almost straight up there. So I would say unlimited climb. I wouldn't say vertical. It's not really standing straight up. But it definitely has plenty of power. So take it out of safe and do something crazy on the way down. Look at those wings flex. They almost look like cat. <laughs> They're made to flex. Can really take a beating. All right, I think it'd be good to come on in. I don't know how long the video is, but we'll probably shoot some more videos on this one. It's just really enjoyable. There's the ground effect. As you can see, I think I'm coming in too fast with too much altitude. So we'll go back around. Definitely like to land it on the grass. It does have a little plastic fin um, under the fuselage under the main wing. So you could land it on pavement if you wanted to, but ah, foam planes aren't meant to land on pavement. Let's see, we still might be too high. There we go. Very nice. Again, very enjoyable plane. A lot of fun, throttle cut on. And uh, hope you enjoyed that. Definitely want to recommend. Of course, my problem is I enjoy all the airplanes, so I have a lot of fun with all of them. It's got the folding props, of course. You probably figured that out. But yeah, well, thanks for watching. Take a moment to subscribe on YouTube there and, and uh, look for some more upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.